Britain's coastline cops patrol ten and a half thousand miles of our shore. From stunning beaches to isolated cliffs, packed seaside resorts. From Scotland to West Cumbria. From East Anglia to the Solent on the south coast. With 40 million recession hit Britain staying at home this year, keeping the peace on the coast has never been tougher. A special job for a special kind of cop. Tonight, looking for drugs on Loch Lomond. Put your hands out your pockets for me. He's put it in his mouth to eat it. I've told him to spit out. Chugging out time on the Isle of Mull. Zero tolerance in Cumbria. Don't go round calling coppers. <laughs> and on the Yorkshire coast, trouble making holidaymakers get what they ask for in Scotland. <laughs> The west coast of Scotland is one of the most spectacular coastlines in the UK. Dotted with hundreds of islands, remote beaches, rocky inlets and tiny harbours. And they don't come much smaller than Tobermory on the Isle of Mull. 900 people live here. It used to be an isolated fishing village before the Victorians discovered it and put it on Mole's tourist trail. Looking after the locals and the few visitors who come here are just five police officers, one of the smallest forces in Britain. Sergeant Angela MacDonald is in charge. She used to be a detective in turbulent Glasgow before transferring to Mull a year ago to become a coastline cop. Policing here is quite unique in that it's a beautiful place to live and work. <laughs> It consists of a strong community where people are very pro-police. You feel your work is appreciated, you can really make a difference here, which is very difficult when you're working in the city centre, um, racing from call to call, and, and you don't have the time or the luxury that we have here. Sergeant MacDonald's luxurious time is under threat. This weekend is the West Highland Sailing Regatta. 200 boats of all shapes and sizes are heading towards the Isle of Mull from the mainland. And they're all stopping off in Tobermory, a thousand sailors in search of food and drink. Sergeant MacDonald and her fellow cops are going to be overwhelmed, and she needs all the help she can get. Her backup is an elite marine policing unit from Strathclyde Police. It has seven specialist officers and two high-speed rapid response boats. In charge is Sergeant Ian Oliphant. Coastline cop who's never strayed too far from water. I've sailed boats um, for, for most of my life. Before I was in the police initially when I left school, uh, I trained and, and qualified as a marine engineer. So these are skills which can be brought in, into the job that, that I do now. There's approximately 5,000 square miles of water within the force area. It's a larger coastline than, than France, just over 1,700 miles. There's 164 identified ports. This is a vast area to cover. South of the Scottish border, in North Yorkshire, lies one of the busiest stretches of the UK coastline. It's dominated by England's oldest seaside resort, Scarborough. Scarborough used to be the ultimate summer destination for millions of Britons, but the Costa del Sol and cheap flights put pay to all that. But this year, the credit crunch and some oldie worldy charm have brought back the holiday makers. Good news for local businesses, tough times for the town's thin blue line. Summer days are usually peaceful, but summer evenings not always so. Scarborough is a small town with a big nightlife. PC John Beaumont is walking the line tonight. 
He joined the local force right. six years ago. Although he's never pleased a big city, he's well aware of the difference. Some of the cities um, obviously have bigger problems than we do. Some, sometimes you have the, uh, more staff to cope and specialist teams, but we, we tend to find that you know, it's, it's, it, is an, it is a nice area to work in, evening. As you'll see, most of the people you can speak to quite freely and uh, they will give you the time of day, whereas bigger places, they tend to not recognise you and you're just a number to, to them. Back at the police station, Coastline cop PC Dave Kirk is getting ready for duty. He's Yorkshire-born and bred and knows all about the trouble you face in these parts. Coastal police and you'll get your hemp parties, it'll be uh, public order side of things, it will be drunken side of things, anything. Burglaries in progress, thefts in progress, robberies, it could be anything. PC Kirk joined the North Yorkshire Police as a teenager and there's nowhere else he'd rather be. It's the coast, it's Scarborough. You can see the sunset setting over the sea and sunrise coming up on the sea. And it's really picturesque. We're more near, yeah, we're grown, but you know, the scenery and everything makes up for it, I suppose. Picturesque, maybe. The crime happens no matter what the scenery. It would appear that there's uh, a burglary in progress coming in. Which is one of the villages off, off, off Alt Filey. We're, uh, we're going to make for it because uh, we're quite close, probably closer than the other officers. This time it's burglars who are causing trouble on the local farm. Yes, I thought. He's there, he's there. Hello, mate. We've only got very sketchy information about what's happened, mate. So. Well, I was in bed and I heard wagging start. Right. Down the hot wire, dude. Is that wagon? Yeah, wagon? And I'll just take a look at it. Now I heard the lorry engine running, yeah. revving, trying, trying to move it, but the air brakes were still on, so they couldn't move it, which gave us a little bit of time to get down here. But they soon sort of left the scene. They don't mess about, do they? And in this part of Yorkshire, like gangs of horse rustlers are known to operate. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm looking for any footwear marks that may be down here. And what they've done is, if you come and have a look at the at the barrel, they've pulled this bit off here. I don't want to touch it because it's going to be preserved for our scenes of crime or CSI now, uh, to try and do the uh, vehicle lock. Be nice to catch him, wouldn't it? Nice way control. Have we got a dog that can come to this scene? The dog is Jess, a two-year-old German Shepherd. That's the negative. The police helicopter is also on negative, the case. Negative, I'm just walking back towards the... Uh, and uh, the right and uh, The dog man's communicating with the helicopter now to try and establish where the track ended, so they can search the area from there. Uh, it was in the main yard, actually. It's, they've, they've only just legged it. Meanwhile in town, the third member of Scarborough's Coastline Night Shift is now on patrol. PC Julie Johnson is a local lass who used to be a police admin worker until she decided to go the whole way. And I just thought, I don't want nine to five. I'm a sort of bubbly sort of person as well. And it appealed to me sort of going out and actually integrating with the members of the public. And it's one of them jobs as well. You, you come to work one day expecting, you know, a fairly level day and then all of a sudden things just bang. You've got a murder or you've got a stabbing. About 15 minutes ago, we had a call from a female to say that her um, ex-partner um, has left a note, a suicide note. We've just had another call to say that there's a male on one of our bridges just uh, close to the foreshore, we call it Spa Bridge, actually stood on the bridge threatening to throw himself off. And we believe it's the same male. So the partner, or the ex-partner as such, um, we're hoping to bring her up. I'm just running up here because I'm going to stop these pedestrians from walking under the bridge, oh, just in case. Excuse me. Excuse me. The problem is, is that we've got a situation and we can't allow pedestrians up that way. Well, I can do steps. Yeah, I do want to. Sorry about that. You know, we're not a big city. 
Problem is, is it's been busy as well because I think Ken Dodd's been on at the Futurist. So we do spend a bit more time looking after the more vulnerable. It's there, I think. We like to think, especially in Scarborough, that we, we do care for the community as well as police the community. Of the he's on the wrong side of the bridge, which means he's hanging off the edge, sort of thing. Oh. I think he's actually at the end of where that tree is. He's literally just towards the edge. He's been on the wrong side of the bridge for about 20, 25 minutes. He has literally climbed over the railings. It's st stood facing inwards, but he's on the outsides, obviously holding onto the railings. If he lets go, basically he goes backwards and it's, I mean, you can see it's a steep drop. I know from colleagues where they've said, you know, they've been to these uh, these sort of jobs before and, 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 you know, the impact and the noise it makes when things happen and it's quite nerve-wracking to think that. Let's just hope he gets back over again, you know, and things work out well. PC Johnson will have to keep moving on as the drama at the bridge continues. He was over the railings here with the drop down into the gardens below there. PC Kirk isn't giving up on the horse box thieves. Behind where the dog section stood. And the Cumbrian Food Festival serves up celebrity chefs and, for the coastline cops, an unusual ingredient. How much is I will stop Mind your head. In Scarborough, on the Yorkshire coast, PC Julie Johnson is still trying to keep people away from the bridge where a man is on the edge. She's waiting for train negotiators, but there's a potential problem. Ken Dodd's in town, and the showgoers will soon be coming out of the theatre. It's just down the road. Yep, just for information, Ken Dodd at Futurist is due to finish in half an hour with the hall of the Futurist turning out. Oh, Jesus, what are we going to do with them? Highs up resources, you've got me watching pedestrians here, you've got your paramedics and ambulance down here. It's also Saturday night, early hours, Sunday morning, bank holiday Sunday, where you've got stuff in town. Oh, God, Ken Dodd's just come out, it's early. Ken Dodd's just coming out, there's going to be hundreds of people here in a minute. You're going to need another unit up there because we need to be here. I'm down. I'm afraid the roads are all closed off. There's a situation up there, we can't allow you up there. We've closed the road off, I'm afraid. Excuse me, I'm afraid it's all closed. You're going to have to, what you're going to have to do is there's some steps. If you go outside of the Olympia, it'll take you up to the Grand Hotel. You'll have to go that way, you see, to go get your vehicle, I'm afraid. Two miles inland, PC Kirk is also under pressure. He's still after the thieves who tried to hotwire a horse box. He's not having much luck. That's the way we're coming to you two. The helicopter's thermal imaging camera has picked up a heat trace. The bushes up there, isn't it? Behind the where the dog section stood. Can't get through, John. If you continued walking the straight line the way you're going, it was uh, it's in front of you in the bushes. Right to your right. The bushes that's between you and your colleague is on the other side, yeah? Somewhere in there, you're stood on it now with the guy with the torch. Officer with the torch, it's just to your right. Five, five, is it anything? We can't see at the moment. We're just having a butcher. Yeah, you're prodding around whatever it is. There's something very warm under there, but uh, you're literally on top of it. It's a farm drain. Yeah. It's probably the pipe that's giving off the heat. Um, like I say, it's a butcher. I don't know if you heard that, but it looks like there's a, a water pipe yeah, or some yeah, form of yeah. storm. Yeah. Yeah. We thought we had him then. We've lost the track. Seven three two from Indy five. Basically uh, here. The negative search, I'm afraid. So um, we're going to have to stand down for some fuel. Okay. The inspectors called it off, so it's been an hour and a half anyway. We've been out here. So. Uh, yes, yes. 
We'll catch them up because they've got some lights. 604-3052. In Scarborough Town, there's been a development. A good one. The man who's been threatening to jump off the bridge has changed his mind. I think he's eventually agreed and he's actually climbed back over um, with uh, assistance. He didn't want to get into the fire lift and come down that way. He's actually gone over that side. The coastline cop who talked the man down is Sergeant Trish Hope. It started here. He was over the railings here with the drop down into the gardens below there. I engaged a gentleman in conversation. I was literally stood here. I was within the arm's reach of him. He was quite happy to have close contact with me. Um, but it was just, again, a question of just trying to persuade him to, to agree to come back over. The senior fire officer on the scene um, established a rapport with him as well, and between the two of us, we actually managed to get him to walk along the bridge. It's just here, and he was, he was walked along with a cradle behind him, and I waited here, and then I got hold of him here, and he came over here. I am so glad I was actually at the bottom of the bridge. I think if I'd have had to stand up there and speak to him, I think I'd have probably passed out, so... Come on, let's go back in town. <laughs> On the Isle of Mull, the annual sailing regatta is gathering pace. The 200 boats are well on their way to Tobermory. Sergeant MacDonald and her four other coastline cops are preparing for the worst. A thousand thirsty sailors heading for the tiny port's four pubs. The specialist marine unit which will be helping her when the boats finally arrive are first tackling another mission. Graham, the last high water was 1455. Looking for drugs on the banks of Loch Lomond. Uh, so it will just be starting to drop. Been tasked by the local division to assist them uh, around Loch Lomond uh, uh, in the islands, uh, there's a number of acts of disorder, um, some, sometimes concentrated around, around uh, campsites. There's no restriction on, on camping on Loch Lomond, um, so you can camp on any of the islands and the shorelines. Much of Loch Lomond is inaccessible by road, out of the reach of normal police. That's where Sergeant Oliphant's coastline cops come in. They can reach the parts that others can't. And for this, they have a new recruit, a rookie. This is Gus. He's a two-year-old English Springer Spaniel. He's just completed an eight-week training course to become a, a drugs detection dog, along with firearms detection and also money detection. He's been operational now for about a month, I would say now, and he's already had some success recovering in the region of about three to four thousand pounds worth of drugs. Rookie Gus faces an even sterner test today. This is his first time on water. Okay. The drugs problem has arisen because a recent change in the law in Scotland gives everyone the right to roam anywhere they like, including on private land. Strathclyde police have had complaints that campers are abusing the new ruling by holding drink and drugs parties in the most remote places. In the water now. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. It's Gus's job to find out if they're right. All right, guys. How are we doing? Well, there's no intelligence or anything to suggest that there would be any drugs here as such, but we've explained what we're doing, the reasons why we're doing it, which is the number of complaints about disorder, misuse of, of both drink and drugs uh, on the various campsites around the loch. Do you have any sharp on you at all? No. no keep your hands out of your pockets for me. Well, I'm just going to show you. I have this pipe. I'm just going to draw something. Something has been smoked in it. I certainly wouldn't think it's just tobacco. Turn around for me. As we approached the campsite, one of the males was smoking what appeared to be a joint. Um, and seeing us, he's put it behind his back and then He's put it in his mouth to eat it. I've told him to spit it out, which he has done, but he'd been done with obstruction. He's admitted that it's cannabis. But because of that, we have uh, done a set where the dog, Gus, has uh, made an indication in the tent. The, the other chap has admitted that it's his, and under caution, has told us it's marijuana. It's going to be a long day. There's more than one campsite on the wall. Can we done doing this up for me, please? 
if I do detect some interest, it might heighten his behaviour. Uh, he'll indicate by sitting down, sitting down at the item, uh, pointing to it towards his nose, indicating it that way, and wagging his tail. What's that there? In the wee bag? Oh, tobacco. No, next to the tobacco, the big lump, the brown stuff. You see it there? Possessing such a small quantity of drugs is not a serious offence, but Sergeant Elephant is a coastline cop who does things by the book. The camper gets a caution, but no criminal proceedings are taken. Yeah, you want to see him apply to the charge? No. <laughs> Two hundred miles south of Loch Lomond lies a far less isolated shoreline. The Cumbrian coast was once dominated by a network of large coal mines and thriving pools, bustling with ships from all over the world, trading timber, tobacco, and rum. The most dynamic port of all was Whitehaven. This was once the sixth largest port in England, but when the mines closed and shipbuilding moved away, Whitehaven was hit hard. It had to look elsewhere for a lifeline. And found it in food. Whitehaven is a small town with a population of around 25,000. Yet it has managed to create the biggest food festival in Britain. Over the next few hours, Whitehaven's coastline cops are expecting 100,000 people to sample its delights and have a drink or two. PC Mick Taylor is a food festival veteran. Well, policing an event like this is actually a family event. Um, and we try to police it not as hard as what you would please something which was totally alcohol related. This event down here, albeit a food festival, is totally no alcohol. So that actually what I think keeps the peace most of the time and actually keeps most people enjoying the atmosphere. The major problems we'll have on here are generally with youth disorder around the fairground areas and the potential of some young people trying to uh, get a couple of drinks onto the harbour front. Now, can I ask you, you from this area, obviously, it's Michelle. With celebrity Thank chefs you. all over the harbour, Try it and it's a chance for Cumbria's finest to sample uh, something other than the police can canteen. Try. Thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Juicy, texture. And for PC Mick Taylor, it's a chance to fulfil a most important mission. Ainsley, yeah. I'm PC Mick Taylor, I'm town centre officer for Whitehaven. Uh -huh. I've got a great favour to ask you. Okay. Come on, Jeannie, quick. On that knee, Jean. <laughs> Behave yourself, Jean. We you know what you like. <laughs> Thanks very much. That's it, task complete. <laughs> you couldn't wish for a better place to live. By the fells, brilliant harbour. What more do you want, really? <laughs> While it's food heaven at the stores, it's booze hell outside the pubs. Yeah, zero two, we're on the way now. PC Phil Carruthers has been asked to deal with some drunken troublemakers. Yeah, we just had a call in from officers down on the harbour now. Um, they've got one under arrest for D and D, drunk and disorderly. Um, so they're not requesting the van. Um, whoever it is, has obviously been violent because they've been parvered as well. Harva is a chemical spray the coastline cops use to subdue those who violently resist arrest. It causes intense irritation of the eyes and takes time to wear off. The lads have been searched and a plastic bag containing exotic plant leaves has been found. Mind your head. Obviously it's been identified probably by the people standing around, the shop owners, things like that. Um, because of what they've done, their conduct, they're not able to be left on the streets. So simple as that really. Keep your eyes closed, it's only temporary. The leaves in the plastic bag are actually herbs, bought at the food festival. But not the sort of ingredient you find in an Ainsley Harrier recipe. Obviously with the stalls and stuff like that that are in at the minute, um, there's a lot of continental stuff that's in. Uh, and this is an aphrodisiac. So it's a powerful blend of sexually stimulating herbs, including the bark of an African tree. Um, why he's got it, I don't know. But it is legal throughout Europe and the USA, according to this. So, who knows? Right, we're going to go in. Now, Ainsley, you're 
Right, I'll come down for the pastry. Can you see? Uh, out, out of one eye, yeah. This man's day out at the food festival is over. He and his mate are charged with being drunk and disorderly. The herbs, though, are nothing but harmless leaves. On the menu, a few hours in the cells, with one unhappy drinking companion who's still asking for trouble. No, we won't shout back to him, just let him shout to himself. Say hello. Say that's, uh, correct. No, no, down here. Okay. All right, you can walk on your own, can't you? Uh, yep, yeah. spot on. Ignore him, he's not your problem. All right. All, All right. But there are many more problems heading the way of the coastline cops. A former military policeman has his own way of dealing with food festival troublemakers. Don't go round calling coppers. I was drunk and poofs. PCs Kirk and Johnson take on all comers in Scarborough. Now go away! And in Tobermory, the elite marine unit finds itself dealing with sailors. What I would suggest is your night is now over. Some of whom are very much worse for wear. festival is in full swing. 100,000 visitors are now crammed into the town and its pubs. Sergeant Jim Lloyd is a former military policeman who knows how quickly things can change when alcohol is involved. He and his team are prepared for anything. If we do have to use it, it's all going to probably pay a Good bunch of... Uh, troops to work with in the van, so we have a laugh and look after each other. That's what it's all about, isn't it? So, I mean, the whole purpose of this van and all these bobbies that are in the van really is going to be to deal with public order, which will be as a result of drink. So in effect, you're tying up seven officers to deal with people who can't handle their alcohol. Um, but it's got to be done, hasn't it? So we'll just crack on and do it. Dave's seen something, uh, a couple of lads pushing each other. I don't know what it is. We'll go and have a win, make sure we nip it in the bud before anything else happens. Get yourself up, fella, you're in the road. Probably come, get yourself on the pavement. You're falling about in the road, you're drunk. So what we're going to do is, I think we're going to have you uh, out of the town for the rest of the evening. OK, right. you have a listen to what this fella's going to say to you. What's your name, mate? On the phone in the middle of the road. Oh, we need someone to come here around the corner, and you've got uh, one flat pedestrian and a, a fatal road traffic uh, investigation, which is a, a waste of everybody's time when it can be averted. Okay, fellas, get yourself away. Jesus, let's not see you again. This lad is now banned for the day from the town centre. He's been given a coastline cop exclusion. Sorry guys, um, take it easy, have a good night, like. Obviously, just a couple of drunken half-wits, so we'll leave them to it. <laughs> In Tobermory on the Isle of Mole, there aren't any drunken half-wits, but there are a thousand sailors in town, celebrating the end of the West Highland Regatta. Sergeant MacDonald and her four other coastline cops are going to be overwhelmed. is at hand. Sergeant MacDonald's backup, the police marine unit from the mainland, has arrived. Their patrol boat can do 60 miles an hour, fully loaded. But tonight it will be less about speed. They have, it's their choice, but they might not be too happy. Okay, and more and about caring for others. Uh, obviously the problems will arise, not want to state the obvious, but drink mixed with people going in dinghies back out to the boats is going to be our main concern. In North Yorkshire, the coastline cops are also concerned about what will happen when their summer visitors have had enough to drink. PC Dave Kirk will be on the front line tonight. We're now in the locker room. 
I'm just getting ready to go out and this is my tackleberry belt what's got all your uh, your toys on that's powder spray that's like pepper spray like CS spray I've got um, my bracelets my handcuffs I've got a spit hood if people are spitting at you you can put this over them just goes over the head I always like to carry one because I don't get I don't like to be be spat on you know it's, it's vile it's filthy don't mind being punched but you know getting spat on is completely something else isn't it I've just got a pouch full of rubber gloves there obviously dealing with the uh, you know covered in puke people on a Friday Saturday night got me old uh, friction lock button but I've never hit anyone with it I'm, I'm a fond user of the gas if you're putting this around someone's legs or other parts of their anatomy then they're gonna have permanent damage out there really if you're not to this point then you've lost haven't you plan is the town centre to see what we can see uh, we're going to have a drive round first and then I think we're going to get out and have a wander around pubs and clubs with, uh, with Julie being the uh, licensing officer Julie the licensing officer is PC Julie Johnson she's already out on patrol keeping an eye on the pubs and clubs as you can probably see now we're sort of coming up to the crowd so PC Johnson has a tough job Scarborough has around 70 pubs more hens more hens about. The summer is their best chance to make a profit. I love you, Becky! Ha! <laughs> so far, so good, joyful, you know. They don't seem too drunk, just all in good spirits, really, which is what we want. So many on his shoulder. I understand. This guy just said, I'm not <coughs> fucking down. Can I knock him down? Around the corner, others are trying to knock each other down. It's PC Kirk's job to stop him. Take him away. Take him away. It's not worth it. You don't need to Have a good night, lads. Have a good night. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. If I'm walking around with an attitude, people might have an attitude with me. But you treat people as you find, don't you? And if they're, they're all right with you, you're all right with them. Why don't you do something about it, though? Well, he's doing that. something he's about it. Now, go away! Coastline policing oh, is usually done yeah. with a light touch. But tonight, there are too many people oh, cutting off oh, rock. Just, I'll tell you what, just go away. Oh. Grow up. No, and at your age, yeah. it can be intimidating, but I think it's, it's a matter of probably not backing down, showing him that you're not really intimidated. and. Um, standing your ground with them, really. Um, most people here are not out to sort of assault police. They're here for a good time. Yeah. Trouble like this may be small town stuff, but PC Johnson doesn't like what she's hearing. I don't know, you just get this feeling that, you know, things are starting to brew up and, you know, things are starting to sort of come to the boil at the end and, and the eventuality is that you end up with fights, people being locked up. In Whitehaven on the Cumbrian coast, the brew is also coming to the boil at the food festival. And Sergeant Lloyd realises he will need every ounce of his experience as a coastline cop. Once the fireworks display is finished, you'll probably find there'll be a mass exodus off the harbour side heading up to the pubs. So you'll get all the last sort of hangers on of families and whatever who've uh, come down to see the uh, day's events, they'll start leaving and everybody else will filter back out towards the pubs. There'll be flashpoints at the taxi ranks, fast food Yummy. establishments. In my tummy! In my bloody tummy! And drunken fools like that. Sergeant Lloyd might have left the army seven years ago, but the discipline he gained is still there. He's not a man to be messed with. Mate, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm only joking. You're locked up, fella. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please leave me out. Oh, oh, we're going now. We're going now. We're going now. We're going We're going now. 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 we I'm not going to ask you again, move away. You, keep moving. Let me come, fella. Good lad, we're going to search you. Good Just round the back of the van. 
We'll just do it around the back of the van. Do that one you shouldn't have. You don't go round calling coppers hoofs. Do you understand? You're locked up. Section 5 of the Public Order Act, you don't have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you fail to mention now. Move away! Something which you let her align in court. Back off, fella! In you go. Watch your head. Section 5 Public Order. Section 5. Quote, all police puffs. What we were discussing earlier about how drunks will come up and speak to you and be quite friendly and then it will just turn in a second. And that one there, chatting away and then decide to get quite abusive, making homophobic remarks. Can't have that, so he's been locked up. But uh, is it... Out the way. Out the way. But as you see, a couple of his mates decided they want to intervene. And you really need to get a grip of the crowd very quickly and let them know who's in charge. If we don't become quite dominant with them and move them out of the way, that could quite easily have turned and they would have tried it on with us. On the Isle of Mole, it's drams and sea shanties rather than homophobic remarks that are the order of the night. The sailors crammed into the pubs in Tobermory are in the mood to celebrate, or at least most of them. Sergeant Oliphant has found the one mariner who, having reached his limit, started asking let, for trouble. Let me explain to you this very simply. You've been removed from the premises. Doesn't matter what it's for, they can refuse anybody, OK? So what I would suggest, your night is now over, yep. all right? And you make your way back to whatever your arrangements are to get back onto your boat and have a night's sleep. And, and that will be the end of it, OK? All right? What I don't want to find is you hanging about here Sergeant Oliphant knows that he and his marine unit will have to hang about for a while longer. It will soon be chucking out time. It's quarter to one. The two main public houses that are, that are left open are going to be stopping the bands about one o'clock um, and looking to, to close up for the evening. Got to watch because people have had a, maybe a skin full of a drink and they've put quite a lot of people on the wee dinghies that go back and forth. They're maybe overloading a few of the boats. They're not wearing any life jackets, and so the danger is when they're heading back, if somebody falls in, and they've not got any lights on, so just make sure everybody gets back safely. Getting everyone back safely is easier said than done, especially when they're having trouble building up a head of steam. He's uh, forgot to turn the actual fuel on and he's had the choke out so possibly flooded the engine. So we decided to give him a tow to the boat to make sure they got on, on there safely. It's, it's been a very good humoured and uh, generally well received all, all, all evening. Yorkshire coast, it's also pub chucking out time. And for many of these holiday makers, that means a trip to the night. And licensing officer Johnson's getting that feeling. My gut feeling earlier was it was going to be busier than last night, which yeah, it will be because it's Saturday. But uh, there are a lot more sort of parties and people dressed up like I thought there would be as well. So it's quite down at the top end of town now because that's where everyone starts drinking. So they've obviously moved off down there and they're heading round, so the potential really is at the far end of town now, but give it another hour or so, I would imagine, you know, we will start seeing, seeing uh, things happening, so we'll see. For PC Johnson, things will be happening sooner than she thought. The Scarborough summer nights finally boil over. In Scarborough on the North Yorkshire coast, Saturday night is in full swing. PCs Kirk and Johnson are facing a wave of increasing disorder. Go ahead. Someone's getting beaten up apparently at the bottom of the green, uh, green lane. Um, 
it's just towards us where we've just come yeah. from. They don't have time to help with the fight. They've been asked to go to a row outside one of Scarborough's three nightclubs. The bouncer has refused entry to a man and his son. The man hey, in the hey, yellow shirt is clearly spoiling for a fight, hey, lads, and the rest of the crowd is getting worked up as well. The men in the red jackets are Scarborough Council night marshals, charged with helping police keep the peace. He's filming off. PC Kirk has now become isolated, and that's a dangerous position for any coastline cop to hear. Punches have been thrown and PC Kirk's helmet is gone. The man in the yellow shirt is in the thick. Get away! PC Kirk's first line of defense is his parva spray, which usually stops even the most determined opponent. This man just laughs it off. The cops use their power spray again, and they're now getting it in the face too. Get away. Ben, get away. PC Kirk's tormentor will not back down either. And the asp, which Kirk believes should only ever be used as a last resort, is out. He's coming in. He's coming in. You stopped it. He was built. You seen it? You need to take it. Just put your hands down. Calm down. Even with five cops on him, the man will not go quiet. And others fancy a go at PC Kirk too. Fuck off. <laughs> With at least eight officers and marshals trying to subdue the man, the power spray is used for a third time. Back off! Back off! The PC Kirk knows there's a danger more of the crowd could join in. You're a kill. Are you watching this? Listen to me now. No, no. Put your cell phone yeah. and relax. Let's have him on deck. And get him on the floor. At last, the officers can get to the man's hand to cuff him. Yeah, please do. But he's so big, the PC Kirk's normal pair aren't enough. I need another cuff. It's too big. Back them off. Just stay calm, mate, all right? Right, we're going to stand you up. And you're going to be all right, all right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Right, good lad. On your side. Right, we're going to put you to your feet. All right. Right. Oh, what's for? No. Ours. Ours. Where's ours? Back there. What? What with me down here? Davy gas is hanging down. I know. I can't. I can't do no else. Oh, it's over now. Alright, it's over. It's over. Alright. PC Kirk's prisoner is now going to face a public charge. Hey, get cap on here. The man is not impressed with the outcome of his brush with the coastline cops. Good lad, sit in there. Stay calm, mate, alright? It's become a huge, huge fight basically between us and them. The adrenaline is definitely pumping. Glad in the back of the van's local lad. Um, you get one down, we do it for officer safety, you know, numbers. It doesn't mean say we're hurting them more. People get involved. You know I mean, I don't think you're well, you used to see it. Julian, I'm going back to the station. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, fine. People joining in. It's a matter of keeping it calm now. I've just spoken to Berlin Star staff, explained the atmospheres. Did they have a good feeling earlier? It was brewing. Well, it brewed and it boiled over. So. Saturday night. This summer Saturday night might have ended in tears and scarlet. 
But in Whitehaven on the Cumbrian coast, peace and quiet reigns. As it does north of the border, in Tobermory, where the sailors are safe in their yachts. And for Scarborough's licensing officer, PC Johnson, it's been a night to remember. But not one which dims her enthusiasm for being a coastline cop. Four o'clock in the morning, you're sort of driving around the bay or whatever, just general policing and the sun's coming up. You know, it's a nice sight, it's nice. The seagulls I don't like, but, you know, rest of it, yeah, the sea's nice, you see. Next week on Coastline Cops, a VIP visit to an East Coast marina. On the lookout for terrorists in the Solent. I mean, look at the targets there, they're yeah, massive, high-profile yeah. targets. Now the Suffolk Eye Festival, it's all the fun of the fair on the beach. But on the seafront, it's just not. Yeah, I'm not arguing with you. I know you're not arguing with me. Mark, get that f***ing camera off, mate.